Ghana is one of the countries in the world where polygamy, specifically polygyny, is practiced. This means that a Ghanaian man has multiple women as partners or wives. Polygyny is illegal in Ghana, but it can be considered legal according to customs and culture. It is not as frowned upon as in Western countries. In fact, there are movements advocating for its legalization. It is estimated that around 16% of Ghanaian women have partners who are married to other women. Polygyny exists in both urban and rural areas and is practiced if there is a perceived advantage to living this way, and the man can support more than one wife. Cultural beliefs also play a role. In Africa, children are seen as a form of wealth. The more children, the more powerful the family. In fact, women in polygynous unions often desire more children than those in monogamous relationships. Polygamy has significantly decreased in Africa since the colonial era, but it is still practiced by a significant portion of the population. In countries like Burkina Faso and Mali, nearly 40% of the population live in polygamous households. Polygamy is somewhat taboo in more developed countries, but under certain historical, economic, and social conditions, it has had its reasons. For example, after the War of the Triple Alliance, Paraguay lost about 90% of its male population, and the government promoted a policy of free love. The situation was so extreme that in rural areas, there was one man for every 50 women. But let's continue talking about Ghana. It is one of the African countries that can have the greatest impact on you. It has a culture that is very different from that of any European, American, or Asian country, with a diversity of tribes, traditions, and extravagant customs, such as tribal kings and dances with coffins. Stay with me to learn about their monarchs, traditions, the most surprising places in the country, and much more. Number 1. In Ghana, there is a traditional hierarchical system of monarchs or local chiefs separate from the central government. They function as guardians of traditions, tribal unity, and culture, and can be part of the nobility or royalty. The organization in Ghana that unites all traditional chiefs and kings is the National House of Chiefs, which is backed by the Constitution. One of the prominent monarchs is Togbe Afede XIV, from the Asogli state. Another is Togbe Ose III, from the Godenu chieftaincy. There is also Gariba II, ruler of the Dagban kingdom. The Asanta Hene is the title of the monarch of the historical Ashanti Empire, which covered much of Ghana and parts of Ivory Coast and Togo. They usually attend significant events on a golden throne. The office of the Asanta Hene is now a subnational constitutional monarchy and is protected by the Ghanaian constitution. The current monarch of the Ashanti is Odom Fuo Nana Ose Tutu II. Number 2. Ghana, located in Western Africa, has been a territory subject to constant European expeditions, especially originating from Portugal, Great Britain, and the Netherlands, to trade in gold, which is found in large quantities throughout the area. Due to its wealth in this metal, this territory was named the Gold Coast. It was first colonized by the Portuguese in 1482, then by the Dutch in 1598, and finally by the British in 1871. The Swedes and Danes also had settlements in the region. In 1957, it was one of the first African colonies to achieve independence. Number 3. The term Ghana means warrior king. The official language is English, but there are others spoken in the country, such as the Sante, Dangme, or Ewe. About 70% of Ghanaians practice Pentecostal, Protestant, or Catholic Christianity. Other minorities practice Islam or traditional African religions. Christianity arrived in Ghana with the arrival of the Portuguese in the 15th century, and Islam with the trade of North African Muslims. In traditional religions, there is a belief in a supreme being and other gods that reside in mountains, rivers, and trees. Christianity can coexist with beliefs in spirits, witches, and demons, which date back to the time before colonization. Number 4. Ghana is one of the wealthiest countries in Africa, with an economy based on industry, highlighting the automotive and shipping industries. 
manufacturing of digital products, gold and mineral extraction, natural gas and oil extraction, solar energy, wind energy, agriculture, and fishing. In Ghana, fishing supports the livelihoods of over 2 million people. However, fish catches have worryingly declined, possibly due to overfishing and global warming, resulting in a difficult problem to solve. Ghanaian fishermen need to make a living from fishing, but relentless fishing prevents fish populations from recovering. Pelagic fish, such as sardines and anchovies, may stop reproducing as temperatures rise. Generally, the lower atmospheric and water temperatures, the more fish are caught, but temperatures tend to increase. The human population also grows, needing more resources, but the fish population does not. As a solution, the Minister of Fisheries announced a closed fishing season for one month. However, fishermen and their families live off their catches and cannot afford to go so long without catches, having no alternative sources of income. This overfishing situation, however, is not unique to Ghana, but also exists in developing countries like Indonesia, Vietnam, India, and Peru. Number 5. The capital and largest city of Ghana is Accra, with about 2 million inhabitants. The climate is dry tropical, close to semi-arid, with little temperature variation, with highs of 118.4 degrees Fahrenheit in March and lows of 62.6 degrees Fahrenheit in August. Because employment and wages are higher in cities, Accra's population has grown rapidly and it is expected to increase by more than 1 million within 10 years. Most rural Ghanaian immigrants go to Accra, making the greater Accra region have a population of around 5 million people, with approximately 40% of them living in slums. Moreover, this has increased air and plastic pollution. Number 6. The median age of Ghanaians is very young, at 21 years old. In comparison, in Japan, the population has an average age of close to 50 years, as do Germany, Italy, Greece, or Portugal, among many other developed countries. There are therefore many children and teenagers in Ghana with a fertility rate of about 4 children per woman, although it has decreased from 7 children per woman in the last 50 years. However, this is far from countries like Niger, with 7 children per woman, or Angola, Congo, Mali, or Chad, where there are about 6 children per woman. It is also far from developed countries such as Taiwan, South Korea, Singapore, or Puerto Rico, with one child per woman. While in most developed countries there is a fertility crisis, in Ghana and Africa, the number of children per woman remains high, although it is decreasing as the continent develops. Number 7. Dancing Pallbearers or Dancing Coffin is a unique Ghanaian company that offers the service of carrying coffins at funerals while the pallbearers perform a choreographed dance. This dance service is charged as an extra and is optional to hire. In 2017, one of their dances went viral on the internet and became a meme. Number 8. The most followed sport in Ghana is soccer, followed by boxing and basketball. The national soccer team is one of the strongest in Africa, having participated in four of the last five World Cups, including the one in Qatar in 2022. Although they missed the one in Russia in 2018. Three of their great historical players are Abedi Pele, Anthony Yoboa, and Michael Essien. The national team is known as the Black Stars and has one of the best fan bases in Africa. Their biggest rivalry is with the Super Eagles, the national team of Nigeria, with whom they have the Jolof Derby, which is the match for supremacy of the Gulf of Guinea. Number 9. The festival or rite known as Depo is one of the most practiced and at the same time most controversial traditions in Ghana. It is celebrated by the people of Odamase Krobo in the east of the country and consists of training young girls who have gone through puberty in their role as women. They have to undergo a series of tests and rituals to prove they are virgins and, once completed, they are considered ready for marriage. Among other things, they receive teachings on child rearing and cooking as well as seduction and how to treat their husbands. Number 10. The climate in Ghana is tropical monsoon, 
with a dry season in winter and a rainy season in summer. In the central and northern parts of the country, temperatures can reach 104 degrees Fahrenheit, while in desert areas, between February and April, temperatures drop to as low as 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Number 11. It has a population of over 30 million people and an area of 91,990 square miles. The majority of Ghana's population is Christian. However, voodoo is still practiced, especially in the northern region of the country. In fact, women can be accused of being witches, performing rituals and casting spells. As a result of persecution, refugee camps are created, such as the Gambaga Witches Camp, inhabited by women accused of using black magic. Number 12. A significant current issue Ghana faces is related to the production of clothing from fast fashion brands. Some brands produce millions of garments each year and recycle only a small portion. The rest is sent to places like Accra, where piles of clothing end up in watercourses. A 19-meter tall mountain of clothing accumulates here, and this is just one of many that can be seen in various African countries. Number 13. In Ghana, there are over 100 ethnic groups, and each has a distinct language. However, languages belonging to the same family can usually understand each other. Ghanaians are the predominant cultural group. Their ancestry dates back to nomadic migration from Nubia, and then south to the Gold Coast. Early Ghanaians established kingdoms and empires between the 10th and 17th centuries, which became regional powers. Number 14. The Asante, or Ashanti, are an ethnic group part of the Akan group, native to the Ashanti region. In the past, they were a significant empire founded in 1670. This culture is matrilineal, so the line of descent is traced from women, which historically determined land rights, property inheritance, offices, and titles. Asante Twi is the official language of the Ashanti region, spoken by over 9 million people belonging to the Asante people. This language is used for literacy in the elementary stage of education and primary school. The language has some unique features, such as tone, vowel harmony, and nasalization. Number 15. The Fante are a tribe from southern Ghana who migrated from the Techiman region during the 17th century. Tribe members settled in numerous small states with their own Fante chief, who had to be of royal descent. It is estimated that there are 2.5 million Fante who are descended from 12 patrilineal clans. Number 16. About 11% of the population in Ghana is made up of members of the Yui tribe, which is one of the country's most well-known tribes for its customs and musical culture. They are originally from Togo and the Volta region. They are mainly engaged in agriculture and fishing, Although, in recent years, they have integrated into various activities, such as weaving and other trades, that allow them to subsist when rains are scarce. Number 17. The second largest tribe in terms of population is the Dagombas, who primarily inhabit northern Ghana, making up 50% of the local population. They speak a variety of languages, depending on the district in which they are located. The main language is Dagbani, as it is spoken in 9 of the 13 northern districts. Number 18. St. George's Castle, also known as Elmina Castle, is one of the country's main landmarks. It is a fortified castle established in the 15th century by the Portuguese and is the oldest European building south of the Sahara. It first functioned as a trading post and later as a stop on the Atlantic slave trade route. Mole National Park is the country's largest wildlife refuge. Here you can see hippos, elephants, buffalo, among many other species of animals, reptiles, and birds. Hunting is prohibited in the reserve, and it is protected by rangers, but poaching still exists. A particular problem is the hunting and sale of pangolins, which are sold live in local markets. Number 20. Kakum National Park is an excellent place for hiking. There you will find 40 species of mammals, 300 species of birds, and over 600 species of butterflies. A popular site in this park is Canopy Walk, a series of observation platforms connected by suspension bridges that rise 98 feet above ground level. This park is located very close to the city of Abrafo. Number 21. 
One of the most peaceful beaches in Ghana is Buswa, located 18.6 miles from the city of Takaradi. Its main feature is that unlike other Ghanaian beaches, its waters are very calm. Number 22. Tamale is primarily inhabited by the Dagomba tribe. It stands out for its beautiful mosques, handicraft shops, and music and dance performances. Additionally, in Tamale, you can find exotic local cuisine. Number 23. In the eastern region of Ghana, you can find the Boti Falls, which attract people from all over the world. To the locals, there is a female waterfall and a male waterfall, and they believe that when the water volume increases, the falls mate. So, a mating ceremony is organized. Number 24. The Volta region is the least visited in Ghana, but that doesn't mean it's not worth exploring, as it has many tourist sites such as mountains, waterfalls, and lakes. Lake Volta is located in this region and is the world's largest artificial lake, covering an area of 3,282.6 square miles. Number 25. The Aburi Botanical Gardens is one of the most attractive sites you can visit in Ghana. Opened in 1890 in the town of Aburi, it spans 158.15 acres. Here you can have a picnic and enjoy the relaxing connection with nature. Number 26. In the village of Paga, there is a sacred crocodile pond where locals believe the reptiles guard the souls of the village's deceased. A curious fact is that high-profile deaths in the community have coincided with the death of some of these sacred crocodiles. Number 27. Ghana has only one natural lake, Lake Bozumtwe, which is a crater formed by the impact of a meteorite over a million years ago. It is considered a sacred place, and it is believed that upon death, the soul goes there to bid farewell to Asaseya, the goddess of the earth and fertility of the Ashanti people. Number 28. In northern Ghana, you can see enormous epigeal nests, or cathedral termite mounds, which are termite nests that protrude from the ground. They can reach up to 8 meters, oriented to the north, to regulate temperature. Number 29. In Ghana, as well as in other African countries such as Togo or Nigeria, an ancient rhythm called Agbadza is danced, which was originally a war dance. Today, it is used to accompany weddings, parties, and funerals. Number 30. A fantasy coffin is a type of coffin made in Ghana that is designed to represent the profession, hobbies, or interests of the deceased. These coffins are often brightly painted and can be quite elaborate featuring elements like tools, animals, or other objects representing the deceased's life. They are often expensive and can take months to create, but the investment is considered worthwhile as it helps ensure the deceased has a proper send-off. Number 31. The Chale Wote Street Art Festival takes place in Accra bringing art, music, dance, and performance to the streets. Its main objective is the exchange between local and international artists and patrons. It includes street painting, graffiti murals, photography, theater, spoken word, interactive art installations, extreme sports, live street performances, film screenings, fashion parades, music parties, and recyclable design workshops. Number 32. A common cultural practice shared by Ghana and other African countries is circumcision, which is highly significant as it symbolizes the passage from childhood to adulthood. Another is scarification, the permanent insertion of an object into the skin to produce a scar. This practice is common in many African cultures, such as the Akan people of Ghana. The Akan believe that the soul is located in the head so they use scarification to mark important events in a person's life, such as birth, puberty, marriage, and death. Scarification also serves a spiritual purpose, as it is believed to protect the soul from evil spirits. The most common form of scarification among the Akan is called abrasion, which involves using a sharp object to scrape the top layer of the skin. This leaves a permanent scar that is often decorated with symbols or drawings.
Number 33. Maggots are larvae that are considered a delicacy in some parts of Ghana. These creatures emerge from rotting palm trees and are prepared, fried, or roasted. Additionally, worms have been used for centuries to clean wounds and help them heal. In Ghana, this traditional method of wound healing is still practiced. The worms eat the dead tissue from the wound, which cleans it and helps it heal. Number 34. Something that may come as a shock to many people is that rodent droppings are edible in certain regions. This exotic ingredient is used as a seasoning for soups. Number 35. Kente is a ceremonial Ghanaian fabric traditionally used as the national dress. It is handwoven on a petal loom and consists of horizontal strips about 3.9 inches wide that are sewn together. The fabrics come in various colors, sizes, and designs. Number 36. Ghanaian cuisine is a blend of indigenous flavors and foreign influences, including European and Indian. It tends to be hot and spicy, with ingredients such as yam, cassava, corn, beans, plantains, and rice. Tropical fruits and vegetables complement the diet. The staples of Ghanaian cuisine are sauces, which are typically eaten with rice. In their gastronomy, you will find many tomato-based stews and numerous dishes containing fish. I will show you some of the most common dishes. This is banku with tilapia. This is red red. This is one man thousand. This is coffee broke man. Number 37. Women in Ghana have been turning shea nuts into butter for centuries, using it for skin and hair care, as well as for food and medicine. They currently face a problem as men are cutting down these trees, leaving the women who rely on this activity without a livelihood. Number 38. In general, Ghanaians place great importance on social behavior, family, and dignity. It is believed that an individual's behavior affects the family and community, so respectful treatment of others is expected. When visiting someone's home, it is considered rude to ignore and not greet someone, and it is expected that everyone, including children and babies, be greeted. It is also expected that the oldest person in a room be greeted first, avoiding actions or gestures with the left hand. If you invite someone out for a meal, an event, or a date, the inviter is expected to pay, and it is considered very rude to make the guest pay for themselves. More daring clothing worn by foreign women is not acceptable. When drinking alcohol, it is customary to pour the last drops on the ground for the gods. Ghanaians who don't drink and are offered alcoholic beverages may touch the drink to their lips without drinking as a form of gratitude and then pour it on the ground. Ghanaians are generally indirect communicators. They avoid speaking or conveying information that may offend the other party. Number 39. Among the common greetings and responses in Ghana are Makye, good morning. Maha, good afternoon. Madwo, good evening. Wohutusen, how are you? Anyame na adam mehuye. By the grace of God, I am well. Me da se, thank you. Kuse, I'm sorry. Me pa wo keo, please. Number 40. The currency of Ghana is the seti, a term meaning cowrie shell. Cowrie shells were used as currency throughout West Africa. Are you from Ghana or have you visited? Leave in the comments other facts or places to visit. If you want to get to know another African country, watch this video about Mozambique, one of the least visited countries on the continent. Give us a like if you liked it, and subscribe with the bell activated so you don't miss other videos like this one.